Hello everybody, it is I, the Willowigi Big Mac, and welcome back to Forgotten Worlds. In the last episode, we have beaten the Spacey Chip World, which is actually canonically called Pyramid World. But now we're but now this world we're in is called the Sky World. But really this first episode makes me think that this is Space Japan. But space! You now all this space talk it reminded me from that one quote from uh I think it was Command and Conquer 3. You know, the uh, I'm going I'm going to the one place that isn't corrupted by capitalism. Space. Again, I could be wrong in that. But anyway, let's go to the shop. Alrighty. So we have another item upgrade. Now, this armor here. So one thing. I, pro I probably explained this last episode, but I don't remember. But this armor can withstand five shots. Again, I don't remember if I went over this last episode or not, but I'm doing this just to be safe. Other than that, there's nothing else really here for me to do, so I'll just leave the shop. Oh look, so this looks like a very, very sick Palpatine from Star Wars. And I know I'm making another Star Wars joke, but it's over oh, in space. I mean, like, I can't really uh, come up with a perfect opportunity to do that. So those big uh, dragon things actually give out a lot of uh, enemies if you beat them. Fortunately, I died there, so I missed most of them. But yeah, so uh, remember the war god, right? So, so in so in Street Fighter V, one of the uh, DLC characters, I think his name was Seku or something, I don't remember. But uh, on the back of his shirt, he uh, uh, you can see the war god sprite on the back, and and the reason why is because supposedly the Japanese name for the war god. Is also the same name for the fun style he uses. So, yeah, it makes sense. Now this guy, now this boss, his name is Iceman. Not to be confused with Iceman from Mega Man or Iceman from Marvel. Specifically X-Men. But this boss reminds me of a boss from Wario World. Which is, which is a, which is a Wario beat -em up game for the GameCube. And one like childhood favorites. However, the boss in that game... However, the boss in that game was actually pretty creepy. Which gives, which gives you even more of a reason to beat it up. However, this boss is so easy that it belongs in Dust World. Because once you take that off, you just start wailing on him and... And then... He blows up and dies. Now I'm going to do it my way. Wait, don't underestimate the cause of thunder and wind. Yep, so here we are. This is the second to last level of the game. Who knew, who knew this game was pretty fast? But then again, yeah, it's an arcade game. It's supposed to be fast. And look, the shop showed up immediately. Alrighty, first I'm going to explain this item right here. So, this is a homing laser. However, I don't have enough to buy it, but I'm not going to buy it. But there's one thing I want to explain. In the Japanese version of this game, I believe in the final level, there's an item that costs the same amount as this homing laser, but it doesn't really do anything. And what the item is, it's Sylvie's dress. Only in the Japan version, folks. You heard it from me? Like, you look it up? It's there. Now, one thing I forgot to mention from the first episode, since this item did appear, first episode is this. This is an expensive item, but this is the Potion of Resurrection. So, what this does, is essentially, 
can revive you when you die. But that's pointless when you're emulating the game, since, well... Since, well, I mean, you have 15 lives. Just mash the, uh, the coin button and mash the start button and bam. Now this is the final weapon upgrade right here, so I'm gonna buy it. And that's it from from me for here. So now we shoot blue Sonic rings. I wish I wish I was joking, but seriously, the shading on this thing looks like the ring from Sonic the Hedgehog. So, so that generator that I just blow up basically destroys all the turns on that screen that, that it's connected to. So I'm going to be going for that since it is a good way to get a lot of seven. There's not really a lot of hold on to puzzle now. Hey, I guess another fun fact. So in Final Fight, one of the enemies actually looked like the, uh, the Unknown Soldiers. And, uh, basically, you just shoot, you just shoot the face of these, um, of these lion lizard bogos and they blow up. Alright, we're at the boss now. And look who it is. It's it's it's, it's SCDC and Wamu from JoJo. The two pillar men. Wonder what the third one is. All jokes aside, these two these two uh, these two are actually based off of uh based off of a uh, a minor antagonist from Piss of the North Star. Yeah. It says, I mean, it says on the Capcom Wiki about this game, so I'm just going to take its word. Uh, it somehow made the uh, blue guy just too. But yeah, these guys' uh, hurt animations are actually pretty subtle, so you, but, kind of, but it's kind of like Doom, where their stun animation is RNG-based. Wow, I had no health left. He's done for. I'm going to kill him today. I'll burn him with my aura. So in the last episode, I remember I mentioned that Capcom was lazy with the final levels of of World Two and World Three, since they're since they're vertical ones. While that holds true for World Two, World Three is kind of different because it actually does give you a challenge. Considering this basically turns into Toho, that bullet hell. Like just missiles just flying everywhere, and this, and the unique thing is that this stage has two shops. So yeah, honestly, everything here I already have, so I'm not gonna buy anything here. So this is just pointless. I mean, I could have bought the armor, but it's gonna, but it's gonna, you know, get shredded up within like. 12 seconds anyway, so what's the point? And like, of course, since this is the final level, it is also the longest level. Of course, not long enough to make its own episode. But, you know, compared to the rest of the levels in the game, yeah, it's decently long.
Look, meteor with a claw. Look at a fireball with a claw. I don't know what I don't know what to even interpret it as. Ugh. That's what the unknown soldier sounds like when he gets hurt. It's just ugh. Um, and honestly, Death Screen just sounds like sounds like the uh, voice actors doing it at night. It doesn't want to wake everyone everyone else up in uh, no, in his household. Oh yeah, there's also homing lasers. And there's and there's the second shot. Just a bit before the boss. So this so this right here repairs your arm. So I'm just gonna buy health. Because why not? And then yeah, we're gonna be going up to uh Bios. And yes, I remember his name this time. Oh look, there he is. I'll just die so I can get a uh, health refill. So yeah, so like, so like the uh, previous boss, um, he doesn't really, like, he has a really subtle, uh, uh, stun animation. And it's, and it's a lot more than the previous boss. Oh, there we go. Now, now we get this. Now we get to shoot the uh, the bloody bastard. But yeah, you know he, you know he has a uh, he has little uh, sonic booms and uh, big uh, big wing leaders. Oh, wait, these sonic booms home in on you. And, yeah. But I mean, like, I mean, even though when you're pound, pounding dirty damage, I mean, it's still a relatively simple boss to deal with. Especially for a final boss of an arcade game. And there you go. He's dead. And no matter what, you get bonus any they can spend, which will add to your score because arcade stuff. I've done it. I've done it. I'm still shivering. Yeah, me too, man. If only peace returns to the world. Thank you very. Hold on. I'm pretty sure that said much. That's a, that's a spelling error there. Now peace is re returned. Yeah, there's a lot of spelling errors. Anyway, peace is returning through the world, and the uh, unknown soldiers. Yeah, never. Heard, yeah, you never hear them again. No one ever saw saw the two heroes again, and the legend became more mystical, and passed on to the people. And as you may see here, as I mentioned earlier on in the Let's Play, Player Two has kind of like a shotgun type of weapon. So it shoots three different directions, but has very short range. And of course, we're going through all the levels, and it also shows off the different weapons. So there's a flamethrower, there's a laser. Uh, oh yeah, so there's there's a bouncy ball uh, weapon. It is kind of fun, but I prefer the uh, eight directional uh, satellite. And that's what the actual uh, item power ups are called. They're called satellites. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, overall, I think I think this let's play this was kind of like a test run to see uh, see if uh, this will work out. And 
yeah, it worked, worked, worked out pretty good, so, so I'll be doing more Let's Plays. Speaking of which, next time, how about I might, might as well maybe slug some Rebels. I'll see you later in the next Let's Play. Goodbye. <laughs>